All right, so welcome back. Um, this is a video where I'm going to talk about quantum numbers uh, and I'm going to fill out this table of quantum numbers and then relate the quantum numbers or the sets of quantum numbers to their atomic orbital designation. So this is a skill or a, um, a thing that really anyone should be able to do with just a basic knowledge of quantum numbers. So once you have the rules sort of figured out and, and, you, and you, you know, know what each quantum number represents, then filling out this table actually becomes quite trivial. It becomes something that, that you should be able to do you know, without having to memorize anything. You just sort of know the rules, follow the rules, you should be good to go. So the first thing that I'm going to do is talk about uh, the different quantum numbers really quickly and sort of as I go along and fill in this first uh, row. The principal quantum number, that's our n value, it's going to start at 1. So that's our, our you know, first energy level, and it's gonna go up from there. One, two, three, four, so on and so forth. Now, for L, L can, can take the values of zero up to n minus one. So here I said it describes the type of orbital. An s orbital is gonna have an L value of zero. A p orbital is gonna have an L value of one. And that's always gonna be the case, right? So once we know that, then we can sort of say, okay, well, what does that mean? Yada, yada, yada. But first, the values of L can go from 0, 1, up to n minus 1. Well, if n equals 1, then n minus 1 will equal 0. So the only value of L that I can have if n equals 1 is 0. There's only one L value possible. So when n equals 1, there's only one L value. M sub L, in this case, is just going to be 0. Now, M sub L, the rules for M sub L, it's going to be from minus L up through zero all the way to positive L. And obviously in this example, we're, it's hard to understand that or hard to see that. But if you just hold tight, we'll get to a, a situation where, you know, we are sort of going through these M sub L values. Now, what's important about M sub L, the magnetic quantum number, is not the values themselves. It's that the number of values. So what I, what I mean by that is, you know, we're going to count how many of these M sub L values, how many of the, of the allowed values are there? In this case, there's only one. M sub S is always gonna be plus or minus one half. So M sub S is the spin of the electron and the electron can either have a positive spin or a negative spin. We're gonna indicate that by plus one half or minus one half. And that's gonna be the same for every single situation here. It's always gonna be plus or minus one half. The number of orbitals, the number of orbitals is really related to this m sub l value. Because there's only one m sub l value, there's only one orbital. So this number of orbitals, we might even just sort of draw an arrow over to here, because that's how we're gonna figure it out, right? That's how we're gonna know how many orbitals there are. Now, atomic orbital designation, the first thing we're gonna do to designate our orbitals that this sort of row uh, represents, we're gonna write a one for our uh, n value that's always gonna be the same. So whatever value you have for your n value, that's your atomic, your first part of your atomic orbital designation. And then based off of its, what its L value is, that's gonna tell me that this is a 1s orbital. So this set of quantum numbers will represent or sort of be the address of the electrons that are residing in the 1s orbital. Now, we're gonna have two electrons, right? Because we have two sets of quantum numbers. It could be 1, 0, 0, plus 1 half, or 1, 0, 0, minus 1 half. Uh, that would be the address of each electron that resides in that 1s orbital. Let's go ahead and move to n equals 2. Now, when n equals 2, again, our L values, our angular momentum quantum numbers, they describe the type of orbital, and they're going to start from 0 and go up through n minus 1. So you're always going to have, whatever your n value is, you're always going to have an L value of 0. But in this case, we can also have an L value of 1. We can go up to n minus 1 n minus 1 would be 1, so I, I am allowed to have an L value of 1. So our m sub L value for, the, for this row here is going to be 0, just like the top row, plus or minus 1 half, 1 orbital, and we're talking about a 2s orbital. So the way that I'm sort of figuring this out, right, my n value and then what type of, of uh, orbital do I have, that comes from my L value. 2 and 1 here for uh, the second part of this, this n equals 2 energy level. When L equals 1, well, now our M sub L values can start at minus 1, 0, or positive 1. So I've got from minus L up through 0 up to positive L, minus 1, 0, plus 1, based off of my L value. Again, M sub S plus or minus 1 half, always going to be the case. And now I've got a 3 here. 
because I've got one, two, three different values of m sub l. That means I'm going to have three different orbitals, uh, you know, in this in this energy level. My orbital designation two again because it's n equals two, and now l uh, orbital um, orbitals, yeah, are going to be p orbitals. So if I've got you know l equals one, that corresponds to a p orbital. And my m sub l values one, two, three different values are telling me that I have three different orbitals. Now we'll look at what p orbitals. Oh, let's just do it right now. So these are my s orbitals. My s orbitals are spheres. So 1s, 2s, 3s are just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then my p orbitals look like this. There's going to be three different p orbitals arranged on these different axes. So there's going to be one here on the, in this picture it's the x-axis, one here on the y-axis, and one here on the, on the z-axis. So that's going to be one, two, three different orbitals. And each one of these orbitals is going to have sort of a, a set of this quantum number. Two, one, minus one might refer to this one. 2, 1, 0 might refer to this one, and 2, 1, plus 1 will refer to this one. Now, it doesn't, you know, minus 1, m sub l does not always refer to the one on the x-axis. That's sort of irrelevant. It can be any one, right? Um, but we're just sort of going to designate this one goes here, this one goes here, just so we can sort of get a sense or, or, or see what we're talking about. All right, let's do the last set here. When n equals 3, of course, l can equal 0. It could also equal 1. And it can also equal 2, right? It's going to go from 0, 1, up to n minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. So I can go from 0, 1, 2. These are my allowed L values. So as you go to higher energy levels, you're going to get more and more allowed L values, right? We don't get to, uh, you know, have this P orbital until we get to energy level 2. And this is going to end up being what we call a D orbital. And we're not going to get the first one of those until we get to um, energy level 3. So let's go through our m sub l values, 0, minus 1, 0, plus 1. Now here we've got minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. So minus l up through 0 up to positive uh, l. m sub s, again, always plus or minus 1 half, spin of the electron, plus or minus 1 half. My number of orbitals, I'm going to count how many m sub l values I have, 1, Three, and here I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to have five different orbitals. So this is going to be my d orbitals. We'll talk a little bit more about those in a second. Um, but this is obviously my p orbitals. I've got you know three of them, and I've got an l value of one. And obviously this is three s, three p, and three d. So that's how we would complete this table. Then once we have the, the completed table, then we can do lots of other stuff. There's a, a video I'll link to uh, that talks about you know, how we relate this to electron configurations, all that other stuff, um, Alex topics, things like that. But this is sort of the, the basics um, you know, to get us started. We will look at the pictures one more time. Hopefully that is helpful.